They're here, everyone. They are the smart kids at the shops with their mothers or fathers, riding their bikes around the streets and playing down by the river, as well as talking to their friends on their smartphones. Join the smart kids each week as they discover, explore, and solve the mysteries of today. Here's your host, J.T. Crowley. Hello, and welcome to my latest podcast. I said last week that I'd be doing a summary of what you know my book, The Smart Kids, was about. But last week I took you to Oman, to Muscat, and there you met Fadal, my very rich Arab boy, and my high-grade Down syndrome character boy, that Harold. So I hope you enjoyed the little story, and now you can see how the, the two boys knit together to form a great friendship. Uh, the rich Arab boy from Muscat, and then Harold, my little poorish boy. Well, not so quite so poor, but he's nowhere near as wealthy as Faddle. And of course, he's got Down syndrome, and he's living with that. And, you know, the, the two characters are learning about each other's ways. And it was a story that was done quite deliberately to bring to the fore that you know, some kids, in, you know, around the world, I've learned this about it, and it's important to put that character Harold in. Anyway, so, I am just doing this little summary, and so that, uh, to summarise the whole of the book, and what it's, you know, what it's all about. And, yeah, I hope that, you know, you have, you, you've enjoyed the, the short stories, because you've, you've had 17, and I've taken you to all sorts of places around the world. And the, the book is really, it's, gonna be, it's, it's a great little Christmas present, guys. You know, so mums, dads, you know, grandmas, granddads, go on Amazon. You've still got time to go and uh, get the book and get it for your grandchildren, get it for your kids. And any teachers, you know, get the book and take it into school and read the short stories to your, you know, your, your students, your pupils. They will love it because it's all about diversity. It's all about uh, different cultures. It's inclusivity. It's, it's a whole host of characters which will engage, you know, kids to see that, oh, how different different parts, you know, different kids from different parts of the world live their lives, experience their lives. So you can go on Amazon, um, Amazon.com or Amazon.co.uk, and you can get the book under J.T. Crowley Books. Um, it's ten pound. Uh, what it is in US dollars, I don't know. But you can also get the Kindle version. But it's a great little present for you know, Christmas present for friends, for kids, and especially those kids who who love going around the world, who love travelling, who love going to see different things. You know, you can go on to each story, see where I've put the character in the world, go and explore that place, go and have a look and see where I've put the character, the sites, the, uh, the areas, you know, where they go, what they do. Um, and, you know, and, to, and see why they're talking about what they're talking about. So it's The Smart Kids, it's by me, J.T. Crowley. As says, you can go on Amazon. There's still plenty of time to go on Amazon now and go and get the book, and it'll be down for Christmas. A nice little Christmas present for lots of kids, guys. Have a look. But, so, let's summarise what the book was all about. Yes, some of my characters are rich, some of my characters are poor, some of my characters come from war-torn countries, some of my characters have a learning disability, some of my characters have an illness. So, there's, there's a huge variety within the melting pot of the book which should engage with, um, you know, with kids, um, you know, to the age range of January 9 to 13, but I don't, as I say, exclude the eight-year-olds because there's an awful lot of bright eight-year-olds out there who would be quite capable of reading this book. And yes, I, I will challenge uh, kids with some of the words and the whole idea is that you then go and look them up, go and look on thesaurus, go and look at the dictionaries, go and google, go and look it up there and see 
why did he use that word? You know, what's it about? And so that's all part of the exercise, you know, go and explore in the places, go and see where they've come from, see why I put the, the words in, and overall have great fun reading the 17 short stories. So let's recap about storylines. So the first character in podcast one was Anjala. Now she was about the snow leopard. Her snow leopard, um, heaven. They're from Nepal, from Pokhara. She was, she's poor. Um, but she's putting a program together to save the, the snow leopards. That's what she was about. Then I took you to Scotland, uh, to Hamish, with his friends Niall and Kidak. And he was talking to you about um, rescuing his, uh, the, the royal stag um, from the gamekeepers and the little cunning tricks that they did to uh, ensure that Rufus didn't get into the gamekeeper's snares. Then, in the third podcast, I took you, I brought you actually here to Derby, where I come from, and it was Charlie. Charlie is my little character, and he is, I didn't actually say in the book what he's got, but he's, I've given him muscular dystrophy, and so he's not been very well, and the story was all about, you know, his friends, um, Rebecca, uh, Peter, and Ben supporting him, and they have a great day out in the park, uh, Darley Park, Don't Park, it's the same, the, the two parks together up in North Derby here, and some of the videos, I think the one when I did with Melana, that was the part where I had Charlie in, and it's just a great day out on the tobacco, um, on a lovely snowy winter's day. Very rare these days for us here in the UK to get a nice snowy day with deep snow, you know, where all the kids can work just, you know, having a toboggan ride. Then, uh, my fourth podcast, I took you to, to meet Ephraim. And because Ephraim uh, is from Israel, uh, from Jerusalem, and that was the story of himself and his friend, Amir, and how they go to the White House to talk to President Obama about how they're knitting the two sides together, the Jewish community and the Arab community, which have been at loggerheads for a long time. And it's how they're doing it. And, you know, so, yes, that little character takes you to Washington, D.C., takes you to New York, it takes you to Jerusalem and the Palestinian territories. It's a great story. And then... And the fifth podcast, I took you to India with Priya. Now, Priya was my blind little Indian girl. And she was talking to you with her friend Nita about the, the Sikh Golden Temple, how she sewed her little tapestries outside and sold them to um, make, her, make her living. Because she was, she's a street kid. And in India, when you go to India, there are lots of street kids, unfortunately, and they survive on the streets. And when you go there into all these places, the tourist places, there they are, they, they rush up to you and they try to sell you their little tapestries, their little ornaments, um, to make some money just to spark the day, basically. Uh, so she's another uh, little curious character that I put in the, uh, in the book. Podcast six, well, I swept you to Chile and I swept you to Santiago. And it was there that we met Juan, my cheeky, lovable rogue, and his friend Jose. And he's my cheeky footballer who um, met, you know, David Beckham. And so yes, he's from Santiago, the capital of Chile. And the story was all about um, how he puts a little program together to raise money for you know, the, the local kids, you know, so they could, you know, play their football and unite together. But he's also, he was the character number that had a plan B. And because we all need plan B in life at times, and his plan B was artificial intelligence, robots. That's what one was about. Then we headed off to um, Podcast 7, and that was with Na Iku. And... She is in Nairobi, in Kenya, and she's talking to you 
or what she was talking to about the Maasai people, the Maasai Mara. And she was talking about cheetah poetry and what she was going to do about the poaching that goes on there, the plan that she's trying to put together to protect the, the cheetah cubs. Um, and she was introducing you to the, the Maasai people, her people. That's what she was about. Podcast 8, we went up north and we went up to Russia. We went up deep inside to Russia. We went into Siberia uh, and to Yakutsk, the mammoth city, remember? And this is where we met Dushka and her brother, Mihal, and of not forgetting Boris, the little boyfriend that she uh, takes for a ride. And of course, she's talking to you, or she was talking to you about uh, the Bolshevik ballet, how she wanted to get into the ballet, because she's my little ballerina character. And she's talked to you also about the trans siberian Railway Line that goes right across Russia. And because she was talking about Fabergé, the jewellery, and also touching on a little bit of the, uh, um, the uh, Russian royal family in the past. That's what she was talking about. Then in podcast 10, I took you right across to the other side of the world, to New Zealand. And onto South Island, and in precise Queenstown. And it's there that we met Anaru. And Anaru, if you remember, was the little boy who I gave leukemia to. And the story was about the day that he got his all clear. He rang the bell, got his all clear. And it was the day of his celebration on the Lake Waikatipu there with his friends. And he had a great passion because he wants to be a a fly half, and his dream is to be a fly half for the world famous All Blacks rugby team. Because I'm a great rugby person. Uh, so that's what he was about. He, you know, he, he's basically he was telling you, you know, that yes, the kids sometimes get ill, but they can overcome this illness and they can then go on to live their lives and they explore and do uh, whatever they want to do. Uh, so that was Anaru. And in New Zealand. Then for the next podcast, I took you all the way from New Zealand to South America, to Peru. And this was Dantel. Now, Dantel was with his brother, Emilio was talking to you about the earthquakes. That's what he was about, the story of the day the earthquake struck his city, and how with modern technology, smartphone, he rescued his brother with obviously a lot of help to um, you know, get him out of the earthquake, you know, out of the building that had collapsed. Because the, you know, Peru sits on the ring of fire, the Pacific ring of fire, so they get a lot of earthquakes. A bit like New Zealand, they get a lot of earthquakes as well. So when you go to these countries, kids, you know, uh, parents, grandparents, you see so many different things around the world, and this is the whole essence of my book. It's taking kids around the world to different sites, different places, meeting different characters, to see that different children lead different lives, experience different things. So it's a, it'll be a bit of an eye-opening book for them to see different things. And I hope that one day they will be inspired to go and see those places. That's the whole idea of the behind the book, the smart kids. Then we, so from Peru, we cross the border into Brazil. And to my character Gia and Kaifai, and they were in Rio de Janeiro. And that story, if you remember, was all about the Paralympics and how they got, how Gia, her clever little ways, her feisty ways, how she supported Kaifi to get him into the Paralympics 2016 for Brazil. And so this is the story of, uh, you know, these two little characters, they're, they're desperately poor, how they got in, you know, they live in the poorest favela in Rio, how they went about achieving such a phenomenal um, theme and idea 
uh, and to get into the Paralympic Games and to, to, to win a medal for Kai Fai. You know, it's, it's a heartwarming, touching story, but it's a message to kids. You can do whatever you want to achieve, no matter what abilities you've got. This is what the book is about, telling that different kids do different things, face different challenges, and overcome different things, have fun doing it, and succeed. And if they don't, try again. So from Rio de Janeiro in Brazil, we flew all the way to Europe, to Switzerland. And it was there that we met um, Amrita. And she was the story of, with her little dog, um, Gretel, how they rescued the French ambassador's wife out of the avalanche. So she was talking to you about avalanches and you know, how they do the rescue team. So as you can see, one of the characters talks about earthquakes, one talks about um, avalanches, one has um, an illness, one uh, is doing programs with the World Life Fund, well, two of them are. They're all different characters. They're smart characters. They're all doing different things, and that's the whole idea. So yes, uh, Emerita was my little Swiss girl. Of course, she was from Davos, and Davos is where the World War takes place, and she was talking about that with her brother Heinrich and her father. Then I took you to one of my heartwarming, emotional, really um, difficult stories to tell. I took you to Syria. And this was Saif and his brother Zahid. And the story was about how they're orphans, they've been abandoned, you know, due to the war there, because this is my war-torn characters, you know, how they survive on the streets there, and how they, through their own cunning ways, they, they get out of, um, you know, Aleppo, they escape through the people traffickers, onto the boats and into Europe, this dreadful um, ordeal that they have, and it's really a message coming across to kids. You know, sometimes, you know, we sit there and think, you know, we're quite lucky at times here in the UK or in the US or wherever you are when you're watching these podcasts. And sometimes you think, you know, I'm so grateful I'm not some of these characters. I'm, in particular, I'm, you know, we're not safe and Saeed facing such challenges. So it, it was important for me to put this little character in, So. Some people said, perhaps I shouldn't have put it in. You know, it's, it's too challenging. It's, but kids see these things on television. They see them on uh, the news. They see everything these days. And they can see the devastation it has. So it was important to put a little refugee character in. And they, that is Saif, my little refugee boy, and his brother Saeed, coming across from Aleppo and Syria into Europe, through the people traffickers, on the boats, and all that entails. Then, we flew from Syria, we flew to Canada. And in Canada, I took you to Quebec City. It's a great city. Um, and this is where we met Melina. She is my little Canadian girl. She's mad about ice hockey. She loves her ice hockey. But she is telling you the story of her mother who for whatever reasons, has um, fallen on uh, difficult times. You know, her mum is, uh, you know, is an alcoholic. She has um, drug addictions, and she's left the home and she's on the streets. That's her own. That's not her own choice. And Malana is telling the story of how she deals with her mother, how she's coping with it, because there are some children in the world who have to face these things and deal with these things. So, as you can see, guys, as all the stories, you know, the short stories you're going through the book, they're all different stories, that different things that kids can face in different parts of the world. And, again, so you can go to Quebec City and, and have a look at the place. It's, it's a fabulous place. So that was my little Canadian girl. And then we went with to Yeshe. Now, Yeshe... I flew you all the way from Canada to Tibet. 
um, the now the Tibetan Autonomous Region of China. And it is here that we met Yeshe and his friend Yihe. And Yeshe is my little Tibetan Buddhist boy. And it's the story of the conflict of traditions in the Tibetan customs whereby you know, his father wanted him to be a monk and go into the monasteries there. And, but for Yeshe, that wasn't what he really wanted. He wanted to be an international lawyer. So it was the story of the conflicts he had between satisfying his father's ways from his customs, but what he wanted to do in the new modern uh, Tibetan area. And of course, I get him to run away, don't I? And he goes all the way across to Beijing, to the Forbidden City. And I'll tell you all about the Forbidden City there. But he also, I take you to Dar Shalom in India, where the Dalai Lama um, lives. And of course, you know, Yeshe goes and has a chat with the Dalai Lama in one of the meetings there to get a bit of an understanding of what, you know, being a monk, a Buddhist monk is about before he makes a decision whether he's going to be, go down the monk route or follow his own dreams of being a, you know, a modern, maybe an international, you know, a human rights lawyer. That's what he wants to be. Then we swept all the way across from Tibet to the United States of America, to Wyoming, to Montana, Yellowstone Park. And it's here we met Kamana and her Cheyenne friend, Diane. So the, this was Kamana. This was the story of to touch on, you know, the Native American people and also to bring you into Yellowstone Park. And that's why I put three socks, the wolf pup in there to talk about the Yellowstone Park. It's a great park. It's fabulous. And also, because Kamana wanted to break a few of the traditions of, you know, the um, Native American, you know, Shoshone people, she wants to be an astronaut. So she's talking to you about the Kennedy Space Centre, remember? And her, her dream was to be up there as an astronaut in the International Space Centre. And that's going to be a huge challenge for her. Um, but that was her dream. So, and then finally, I took you to Oman, Musket in Oman. And it's there that we had Badal, my very rich Arab boy, and my the character Harold, my high grade dad syndrome boy. And of course, that story, as I said to you at the start of this little podcast, because it was the last story, the 17th, was about the two boys from different backgrounds, different cultures, different wealth, different learning abilities, coming together to learn about each other's ways. So that for me was, you know, a great story. I hope that over, you know, the last 17 podcasts and this one, that you have enjoyed the stories and you can see how contrasting they are, how diff all characters are different, they bring different things, they inform kids of different things. And, and I always say, you know, when you go into each of the characters, is to go on Google Earth, go and type in all the places where the characters come from, go and have a look at the pictures, go and see where the you know come from. Was I right about the descriptions? You know, you know I take you down, the, you can go down the streets with the characters, you can go to the cafe shops, you can go into all the places that the, that the characters go into, you know, through the stories, through Google Earth or any other map, you know, map app, you can go and explore. So it's a great book for kids to go explore the world, see that different kids lead different lives, have a lot of fun going around the world, exploring the world. I've been to lots of those places. Some I haven't been to, they are on my bucket list, believe you me. And um, so it just leads me to say thank you very much for listening to all the podcasts. Um, now, there's not going to be a podcast over the Christmas period. Uh, we're taking a break from doing them, but I will be back in the new year. And I'll be doing a podcast slightly different. I'll be talking to you about my new book about the writing, but I'm going to talk to you about how I create characters, how I plot the stories, how I, you know, pad out the stories, um, and how to create a story, how to make it happen, 
I'm going to be doing more in videos like that, on a flip chart, and so that you can see how to go about writing a story, um, where to put your character, how you know what's your character about, you know what story is going to be about, what timing, you know where, all those sorts of things. I'm going to talk to you about um, doing little podcast lessons, as well as talk about the Nordic kids, my kids from Iceland, Finland, Denmark. Sweden and Norway, I've got some new characters coming up. But for me at the moment, it's just saying thank you, have a great Christmas. It's not too late, guys, to go on Amazon.com or co.uk, go and get the book, The Smart Kids, under JT Crowley Books. Enjoy. And I really love when you've uh, got the book or the Kindle version, is to give me some feedback, so, you know. What you thought of the characters? Did you enjoy the stories? Because an author always needs to know, does his readers um, enjoy what he's writing about? Because if you don't, then the author needs to change things uh, and do things differently. Anyway, happy Christmas, happy New Year, and I'll see you in January. Thank you very much, guys. Bye for now. Thanks for listening to The Smart Kids. Want to follow more of their adventures? Check out The Smart Kids by J.T. Crowley on Amazon.com now.